So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey in living Ayurveda, because I know sometimes when, when I'm listening to someone who's made a lot of progress in something that I want to make progress in, it's like I often will see them where they're at now, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sure they were always that way. But it's never that way, right? We always have to, <laughs> we all have a story, we all have a journey. And so for me, when I, w I was pulled into Ayurveda in the last video, I told you a little bit about my work tracking the factories and the energy efficiency. And, and I was coming very much from about a decade of, of planetary activism work, which I'd started in high school. And I was looking at, you know, how are humans going to become more conscious? And that's what pulled me in to wanting to study yoga and Ayurveda, is I wanted to know why as humans were we not taking care of our planet? Why were we also not aware of how to take care of our bodies? Why was I not aware of how to take care of my body? And what did, what did people really know about this? And I had, I had an intellectually filled mind from a very academic education and a lot of world travel. And, and I came to it as like, I need to learn this for myself and then and on, a, on a micro level or on an individual level, and then more on a social systems level, like, we need to learn this for humanity. Like we need to know like, why as humans are we not taking care of our planet? Like what are we not getting here? And that's really what propelled me into, into Ayurveda. But alongside that, on my more personal level, I had actually suffered from constipation and migraines since early childhood. My first earliest childhood memories are this is sort of embarrassing, but really of like the, my earliest childhood nightmares where I was like sitting on the pot and my poop wouldn't come out and everyone else was going on a walk. I still actually remember this memory. They were all like going on a walk. We were on vacation and they were all, all the kids and the parents were going, they were going to go and they were going to go on this journey. And I was left behind because I couldn't get the poop out of my body. Well, I had migraines on and off from, from really my earliest memories. So when we get those, they're just around three, four years old. Uh, and, and I went to a lot of doctors as a child in high school and, and we could never really figure it out. But honestly, like at the root of it was a, was a deep dehydration. which <laughs> just like so freaking easy. There's a water right there, right? Was, uh, was eating, eating foods out of alignment with with my own biorhythms. My family was eating dinner too late at night for my Agni type, which was a, was a high Pitta type, was that sparky, sparky Agni. And, and there was just a lot of toxicity that I had inherited in utero from my mom's habits. Great woman, amazing woman, but you know, we get what we get. And so my point being, I actually, when I started to study Ayurveda, I was doing it for these bigger reasons on this bigger level, but I had a lot of work to do at home in my own temple to clean things up. By that point, the, the constipation and the migraines had gone into symptoms of allergies. I had allergies like most of my teenage years were just snot filled in the spring and, and in the fall. Uh, I was, you know, tried a number of different medications. My dad nicknamed me the pill popper. Yeah, that was a good one. Cause I would just pop <laughs> pills. I was looking for fixes. And, we didn't know anything about holistic medicine in our household or holistic solutions or how to use the spices on our shelves. And so by the time I was um, in college, after college, I had developed also a lot of lymphatic stagnation that from the, you know, that had actually caused the, you know, the constipation was a symptom of that. The allergies were all reflections of this lymphatic stagnation, but by then it had gone, it had gone deeper into my hormonal system. So I had fibrocystic breasts in the second half of every monthly cycle. And, and I just felt a little bit disconnected in my own physiology. I had no idea what was causing all this, but I had a sense that if I was going to learn, I was going to learn it at home. I was going to learn it in here. And then I was going to, and then I was going to, you know, see how it connected to some of these bigger issues of, okay, if we take care of ourselves, we might start to take care of our ecosystems. So I went to Ayurveda school. I also went to yoga school at the same time. And so for years I was a go-between. I invested my time in the equivalent of two master's degrees, one in Ayurvedic college and one in yoga college. And I was basically this conduit between these communities. And I knew what each was wanting from each other, what each was actually needing from each other. And that's where Yoga Healer began in 2001, when I had graduated from school, bought the domain name, and started to reach out. 
So what happened was I, I was an Ayurvedic medicine practitioner and a yoga teacher. And for years, I taught class after class and saw client after client and would ask questions about their symptoms and their habits. And what I started to do is put together that if, if these basic habits of yogis weren't aligned, then it was really hard to help them with their symptoms. If they didn't understand how to use their spices, then we'd need to start there. If they were living off the cycle of the sun, if they weren't in fat metabolism, there's all these things that we, that we needed to start to do. And what happened is over time, I, I developed a little bit of a curriculum of like what, what most people just needed. And I was invited to yoga studios all over the United States to teach this, this little very simple weekend workshop curriculum. And I'd go from place to place and, and people would leave and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I understand my mind. I understand my constitution. I understand my metabolism. Like this is, this is incredible, but I have a feeling like if you go away and, and uh, I'm staying here, like I might forget. Like I might not go deeper and I really, really want to go deeper. So as I was going to community to community, to yoga studio to yoga studio, and I kept hearing that, like, we want to keep going. I thought, well, this is pretty easy. Like, let's keep going. There's technology out there. Lucky for me, my dad was a, a software engineer, so I always knew that technology could do a lot for us as human beings. So in 2007, a decade ago, I started the very first living Ayurveda course. I was pregnant with Indy, and to me, her life and the living Ayurveda course, uh, they, they came together, they meant to be, they're co-arising, they're co-creative. And so it's been fascinating over the last decade. I've taught this course every year. And more than taught this course, what it really is, is I've, I've guided a collective community of people that want to live in their physiologies. They want, they want to, you know, first of all, just like clean the temple <laughs> and then move in. And, and develop the rhythms and the rituals that start to awaken the subtle body technology. Right? And they, they want to be with other people that are doing the same thing so they don't feel like some weirdo who you know, has these, these, these more sensitizing habits that has this, these different ways of relating about the bliss that they're feeling and the ease and, the, and the, the nourishment that they're starting to feel more from the inside out. Right? They want people to connect with. So as the course grew over time, what happened is it became much more of a collaborative experience. I had the benefit of continuing to study year after year, and I still continue. Like what my biggest expense every year is my, is my own personal development and education, way more than what I put into a house or food or whatnot. And so I've been able to study with incredibly enlightened leaders and masters and gurus and teachers over time. And I've studied a lot about dynamic groups. I've studied a lot about this exponential evolution that happens when people who want to go to the same place get together with some people that are a few steps ahead of them. And what happened is that over time, the course has gotten more and more developed, better and better. And what kind of cracks me up is when I look back to 2007, is I see, like, wow, it still had a much more academic nature. Like we were trying to really learn the philosophy of Ayurveda and all the different systems and the maps in the territories of Ayurveda. And now it's really living, embodied, breathing Ayurveda. And so the curriculum itself is very much based on us knowing what is fast and fun and effective to get you feeling as vibrant as you wanna feel, as you getting your family aligned, you getting your household aligned, you understanding how to use the spices in your kitchen cabinets and the plants that are growing outside your door. You understanding exactly how to evolve your habits, not just your bio habits. Yeah, we get our biorhythm habits automated quickly in this course. But then to be able to apply that habit evolution to anything else in your life that you're wanting to design for in the future. So you get a lot of this design thinking, right? This sort of, this sort of like lean startup technology applied to your own personal evolutionary development. And what I found over time, because what I learned from my teachers and my gurus was that the next phase of evolution is collective evolution, is collaborative group, dynamic groups, is this way of co-creating together. And what I found is that people wanted more and more connection and more and more support. So over the years, we've built in mentors, we've built in assistants, we've built in a lot of lateral structures for leadership to arise within the community. So now the community has its own world unto itself. And when I look back and I think, wow, all this started because I was willing 
to create a curriculum that I found that most of the yoga students and most of the Ayurveda clients, I found like most of them needed but they weren't able to get through the yoga class or they weren't able to get through the consultation or they weren't able to get through the weekend workshop because none of that built the container to learn a, a larger system, to shift the habits, the daily habits, the habits that are so hard to shift because of the collective, because our habits are communal. And so we built the course around, wow, okay, this is what people, this is what people seem to learn to know and then what happened is over time, we've tested year after year after year, every year we are experimenting. What's working? What's fun? What are you guys into? What seems like, eh, uh, right? And we leave out the eh uh, next year and it just gets better and better and better. And what I'm finding now, and to me it's, it's so exciting, like deeply exciting because people are learning what they need to learn so it's effective, but they're learning it faster than ever before. People are evolving faster than ever before within the course. The other thing that's really exciting to me about it is it's more fun, it's easier than ever. So not only is it effective, but it's fast and it's fun. And to me, that's really how it should be. I know anything I wanna learn, it has to pass. I call it the three Fs rule, even though they're not really three Fs, three Fs, I know that. But it has to be effective and fast and fun. Because I wanna to get to where I'm going, right? I wanna be there. I want the future self that I'm sensing into, I want that here sooner. Why? Because why not, right? We all know like the world's speeding up, so we actually have speed on our side. It's just a question of, of dropping in. Oh, change can be so much easier if we know how to change. Oh, we know we need a collective. We know we need to bring the core peeps in our lives that, that have the knowledge, that have the living wisdom that we want for ourselves. So I hope that helps you understand my motivations behind why I just started this course 2007 and why I've continued to teach it. There was actually a time, I believe it was around 2012 as the, as the yoga health coaches, um, yoga health coaching, which I also founded that community as that was really starting to, to coalesce and come together and gather a lot of new energy. And I was like, maybe we're done with living Ayurveda. And the course members and the course leaders, they said, go. No. We're not, we're never going to be done with this. And I thought, okay. And I have a joke around Yoga Healer, and that's like my, my courses, like they're easy to birth and they're, they're hard. They don't seem to die. Right? Yogi Detox, I've been teaching since 2002. It's 2017. I'm like, are we, are we doing this again? Yeah, and the community's saying, yeah. So what that tells me is that there's something in us that we want. We want to know how to move into our temples. There's so many of us out there that we've done quite a bit of work. Like we might have a good yoga practice, a good meditation practice, a pretty nourishing diet, but we're really wanting this deep wisdom of the ancients. We're wanting the wisdom of yogis. We're wanting the maps. We're wanting the maps of the chakras and the koshas, not just on this intellectual level, but in an embodied level. Right? We're wanting to understand the values or how the pranas run in the body. And we're wanting to know how the practices that we're doing, like where they go next and how they affect our physiology. But like underneath all that, we're also just wanting to make our day-to-day -day lives more streamlined, more easy, to open up time so that each year we seem to have more free time and more focused time as our mental capacity increases from the practices and the habits and the attunement from living in rhythm from having the rituals that give us the focus and the clarity, right? Both cellular clarity, right? And also visionary clarity. And as we start to adopt that, we start to notice like, wow, life does seem to get better and better. And what's so cool is it's not just me experiencing it in my own little bubble, but you are too, and you are too, and you are too. And together we have the most unbelievable conversations. And as that's happening, you're starting to notice like, wow, my local community is up leveled. It's happening at a totally different vibration. The level of conversation is at a much higher level. And you're starting to notice like, whoa, like that's not you heard talking about that exponential evolution stuff. Like I think I'm I'm living that. Like this is really cool. So where are we going next? And to me that's what living Ayurveda is all about. It's about the foundations. Right? It's not really, I mean there is some fancy stuff, but it's it's really just about about the, fun, the foundations of, of living an enlightened life. 
And then we can actually get on with the other stuff because everything else is streamlined and ease-filled and automated and we're able to prevent imbalances from sucking us into sick days and we're able to you know, get out of the sort of the boring conversations we might find ourselves spending time in and get into just really high-level dialogue where we're, we're actually just creative and invoked and, and people are pulling the best out of us, pulling that forward. Right, and we're able to actually prevent the diseases of our ancestors from going on to the next generation. And that's powerful. We all know the science behind it, I would hope, right? We all know that through the epigenetics that that's possible. But then we get like how our habits, how we can live that, how we can design for it, how we can help our, our families, our, if we have children, right? If we can actually help our children design for enlightened living, even if they're not interested in you know, spirituality, or they're not interested in yoga or Ayurveda, like that's just the superficial names for what's really going on here. So that is the essence of the Living Ayurveda course, and I will tell you loads more about it in video four if you want to learn about how to become a member in this community. Uh, it's something that I take very seriously because I want people that are going to add something to the community Right, who are who are really gonna who who are really showing like yeah like I, I want this now I need this now like this is the conversation that I want to be in so I'm gonna tell you all about what happens on the on the other side of that gate into the community I'll I'll give you the sort of the sneak preview of that in video four.